Hey guys, what's going on? So in the video today, I'm very excited because in today's video, I actually just finished up my third and fourth backpacks. And I'll get to why I have the fourth one here in a second. But this one, I was drawing up sketches for my previous one, the Wild Blue. I wanted to go for like crazy, vibrant color schemes on that one. For the body, I did Cobalt Blue Gen X leather. And then for all the accessories and the uh, secondary components, I did Lemon Drop Gen X leather. This one I call the Forester. And obviously the color scheme is very much more of a rugged outdoorsy type. Less vibrant, well still pretty vibrant with the emerald green Gen X leather. And then I used for all the components and accessories, I used this premium harvest leather, it's called Autumn from Acadia Leather. This is all leather from Acadia Leather. This premium harvest is incredible. It's very similar to Chrome Excel. It's actually a pretty tough to cut through though. So it's it's got a similar temper to Chrome Excel, a very similar look, a very similar pull-up effect to Brown Chrome Excel. It's very waxy, very oily, as you can see right here. For all intents and purposes, it's very much a very similar rendition of Brown Chrome Excel, I would say. So it's yeah, premium harvest, and the color is called autumn. Like I said, it's very rigid. It stretches a little bit like Chrome Excel does as well. It's very difficult to cut through, which it, which I find interesting. It's interesting that it stretches. It's got a pretty firm temper, but it's still very supple, very malleable, similar to Chrome Excel. I love it. In fact, I'm considering ordering more. I have my cart full at Acadia Leather. They do really cool sales. Like right now they're doing, again, buy four, get a fifth hide free. Each hide is that I'm looking at is roughly 115 to 150, I would say. And so that's a pretty good savings, about 20%. So I'm considering buying more because I'm almost out of the, the autumn premium harvest. But let me talk about this bag a little bit. I actually wanted to tap more into the outdoorsy, forest, rugged type of a look for this one. Something that you'd use out in the woods, something that you know, the color scheme sort of blends in with the woods, with the greens and the browns and the earth tones. But again, keeping a very simple design. As you can see, I kept the same design as my previous two backpacks. I like this single outside simple flap without an enclosure, just something easy to throw like something easy into like headphones or something that you need access to quickly. You just throw it in there, grab it out without having to unravel the enclosure straps here at the top. So again, I really liked Dave's initial selection to opt for the double enclosure strap instead of the single, which is on my brown Chrome XL backpack. So I think from here on out, the double is gonna be standard. I think it really gives it a really good aesthetic, not to mention it provides a little bit more functional security in closing the bag. And then I really, really am enjoying this tension distribution strap system. I look at like all the different backpacks online, the leather backpacks that they sell for roll top styles in particular. And I've never seen an, a strap system like this, except for on the bag that I bought on Etsy over three years ago now. And uh, that shop isn't even in existence anymore. So I did a similar thing. Like I don't use the same rivet system or the same rivets for that matter. I updated the design just a little bit to better suit my needs. I really like how it looks in particular. I also like my buddy Dave that I sent my first bag to. He said it's very comfortable and I agree. It's, it doesn't create a lot of tension on any part of the bag that holds the straps in place, which is which is important. But it also just looks good in my opinion. It looks better. My brown Chrome XL backpack from Etsy, again, it has a D-ring right here. I opted for an O-ring. I think the O-ring looks better. These tension straps are adjustable. These two at the top, they're adjustable. This, this pull handle does a few things. First off, you can hold the bag by it, but also it connects to these tension relief straps. And then it also houses the two enclosure straps that they run straight through this pull handle. So again, I went for number nine rivets, very thick copper rivets. I opted for copper rivets on this one. I think the copper looks a lot better against green and brown than the brass does. The leather used in the Gen X leather is four and a half to five and a half ounces. So for typical backpack straps, to my knowledge, they like to use 10, 12 ounce thick leather. So I just took double cut two of these pieces and I bond them together and then I stitch them together and that creates essentially a nine or a 
10 ounce thick straps. So th these are the main straps. So they're double reinforced with two layers of the emerald green Gen X leather. Double riveted here. I like to do a contrast emerald green Gen X against the autumn harvest. I think it just looks so sharp. Green against brown looks so good in my opinion. I did premium harvest at the base of the bag, but most of the body is emerald green Gen X. I think it came together pretty well. Okay, so on my wild blue bag, I took inspiration from the storm welt on a boot. And I did that again on this one. So I, what I do is I take a quarter inch thick strip of the premium harvest and I just punch holes in it and then I just stitch it around the opening here, the, the aperture. It has an aesthetic purpose, but it also has a functional purpose in that on the inside, you've got these folds that come together, these seams. And as much as I do reinforcement stitches on the seams all throughout the body of the bag, I do standard stitching and then I do chain stitching around that to really wrap it tight so that to make sure that, you know, this leather really holds up in the long term. Essentially, my, my goal is, is if any part of the bag gives out, I'm hoping the leather would rip before the stitches would ever give out. So that's my goal anyways. I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to pressure test it quite to that extreme. Some people, they, they rivet or even double rivet these seams on the inside to make sure that, at, especially at the aperture, it really stays closed. For mine, just doing a support, an additional layer of support of leather at the top, this leather strip does the same thing. It definitely lends added support to these seams at the aperture. For that reason, it's got both a functional and an aesthetic purpose. And I, what I like about it is when you roll it up, say it's not too full, and then you close it up, the support strip actually shows when you close up the roll top. So it actually shows, and I think it looks good. You could cover that up by really rolling it tighter then it's hidden but i think that it's kind of cool when the bag isn't too full it's kind of hanging like sort of half halfway down the other thing is it actually helps ergonomically when you're rolling the roll top shut it actually gives you sort of a handle to grip it acts as something that you can grab onto to really fold that roll top shut it has many benefits that i think i'm going to definitely incorporate that into my design permanently because i really like how that's working out so I posted this bag, and then, surprise, surprise, <laughs> I have a, a friend on YouTube, he has his own YouTube channel, Oleg Codderly. I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel. He reviews boots, he's a very nice guy, I've been talking to him for a couple years now, great guy, he's, he's on Instagram, he's a boot lover just like myself. When I posted my Forrester bag, he messaged me and asked me to make him one. So I made this one for him and I finished it up just last night. This one went very, very smooth. And when I, when I showed it to my wife, she said, I like this one better than the one you made for yourself. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy. If I'm going to send something to a friend of mine, I want to make sure that it's better than something that I would make for myself. So, cause I know I have the equipment here that if something gives out on my bag, I can fix it myself. It's not a big deal. But if I'm sending something to somebody, I really want to make sure that I give it every possible reinforcement. I want to build as much integrity into the bag as humanly possible because I don't want at any point this bag to give out. On my roll top backpack, my Chrome Excel one, I was about to take a trip a couple years ago and one of the snap rivets, they use snap rivets on that one, and they held up really good for yeah, a couple years, but then one of them at the base, it was one down here at the base just gave out. All I had at the time, I wasn't into leather working at the time, and all I had was a little button kit. So what I did is I, I installed a snap button down at the base, and that didn't hold up at all. Like as soon as I'd put the bag on, that snap would come undone because it was a snap button. And it was a cheap snap button at that. So I said, you know, if I ever make my own bags, I'm gonna use like real solid rivets. Since getting my rivet system, I installed my own rivet down there and it, it's held up wonderfully. So that's why I use the solid rivets. They hold up just so much better. They're so much more solid. They're so much more permanent. So I made this one for my buddy Oleg. I really hope he likes it. I really hope he enjoys it. His outer flap here looks a lot cooler than mine. Mine's sort of just like, just sort of a boring brown outer flap, whereas his has like cool marbling going on with it. The body has a lot of really nice character going on too. But yeah, as far as the design goes, I didn't change hardly 
anything at all. So I have some stuff in this one. That's why it looks a little bit more full, probably. Oleg's bag came together very nicely. I'm going to get some good outside shots of both of them next to each other. So this was basically my first order, and I'm happy with how it turned out. Oleg, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and please, everybody else, let me know what you think, how, how these bags turned out. I think it's cool that Oleg, you know, took such interest. It's very humbling when somebody wants you to make them something. It's it's probably one of the most humbling experiences you could you could have. In this case, Oleg actually he lucked out because overall, yeah, I had just enough square footage left to get all four panels of the body cut and then these big primary straps cut. So I had just enough left. I was very happy that I had enough to make two bags. So I could basically make two bags out of a side, out of about 20 foot square side. Oh, all right. I do have, I guess I do have some emerald green Gen X leather left. You know, it's not a lot, but it's, it's like that's probably my biggest piece remaining. Well, actually, that's probably the biggest piece remaining. I don't have a whole ton left, so maybe just enough if, if I'm making something in the future to like use it as like a panel or an accessory or something like that. Or I could make, I could cut straps out of this. Here's a strap. That's about a 5 8 inch strap. This is one of the best things you can do with your scraps is make straps out of them. Just to give an update with how things are going, I'm having a lot of fun making these backpacks. I think that, you know, it's one of those things where I didn't see what I wanted out there in the market, so I decided that I needed to make it myself. And I'm having a really good time doing it. It's so much fun. It's addicting. Leather work, if you're considering it, it's seriously one of the most fulfilling things, in my opinion, because I love working with it. I love feeling it. Being a boot collector, part of why you know I collected so many boots is because I wanted to experience all these different leathers. And when you cross into leather work, you can actually experience all these leathers in a different way. And what I like about a backpack is it's a new dimension to experience the leather in. When you're wearing boots, out of a certain leather. Boots are awesome. They're they're very manly, they're very rugged, they're very supportive, but when you have a bag made out of it, it's like a whole different function, whole different area of your body that you wear it on. It's a whole different experience altogether. And I just I love big pieces of leather, and that's why I like these backpacks. And so I find myself just carrying mine around, just wearing it around. I don't need I don't need it, but I like to carry it. You know, I just like to be around it. And so like walking around the mall, I'll grab my backpack, put it on, walk around the mall, walk around the park with it. Again, not that I need it, but it's like, I just like to have it. You know, I, I like to have it around me. Yeah, part of it is I'm sort of testing it, but another part of it is, is I just like to go through life with things that I like around me. Yeah, that's really it. It's kind of it's kind of like the reason why I still wear boots in 100 degree weather. It's because, it's not because, is it functionally the best thing to wear? No, it's what I want to wear. You live in your clothes and you live with your leather and if you really love it then then you take it with you you know and it doesn't matter and what else is cool about it is it's sort of like the chicken and the egg idea it's like what came first sort of a thing like because i like taking my leather on adventures on hikes and on on cool adventures out in nature and stuff and on trips and i like to test it i like to see what it can do i like to push it it's almost like well am i doing this because i want to do the adventure or am i doing this because i want to use the leather items. And it it really does come down to it, like it's a good question because it's like what I have wanted to go on this adventure, it's almost like the leather items embolden you to do cool things in them, if that makes sense. So it's not that I wouldn't go on adventures if I didn't have leather items, but because I have leather items, I'm much more apt and much more enthusiastic about going on adventures. You know, I've always, had the adventurous spirit. I've always loved to hike. I've always loved to climb. I've always loved things like that. Beauty, nature, mountains, rivers, oceans. I love all that stuff. But sometimes I really ask myself, am I pushing myself to do these things because I want to or because I actually want to see what my uh, cherished leather goods can handle and see what how they operate under stress. So I just kind of want to give updates on this leather work. It's so much fun. I encourage anybody interested to get started. Do it. If, if there's something you want to see done that isn't being done, then you can do it. I mean, step up, do the sketches, put it together. You know, order the leather, put it together. I'm very excited actually because I just got my first 
Corween hide in this week. An upcoming video is gonna be showing how I'm building that. It's, it's a very thick leather though. It's like seven ounces, so it's gonna be very difficult to turn. <laughs> So like this four to five ounce leather, four and a half to five and a half ounce leather is very difficult to turn inside out. That thing, I don't even want to think about how difficult that's going to be to turn inside out. So <laughs> anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Give me your thoughts. What do you think about the Forrester backpacks that I made? This is just a hypothetical question. If I were to start, you know, my own leather making company, and I were to offer this as like a core offering, do you think this would be a good core offering? The green, the brown, the forester? Or do you think it's kind of like too out there, too crazy? Just give me your thoughts. And, and what, do you, what do you think? What's a fair price? I like asking my audience uh, advice because I like to kind of just get a gauge for the interest out there and as well as like what people will think about this sort of thing. To be fully transparent, there's probably about $150 worth of materials in here between the rivets and the brass hardware and all the leather and then in addition to that the workmanship I probably put 40 hours 30 40 hours into it I'd say I'm getting quicker so I'd say you know my first bag probably took me 80 my second one probably took me 40 this one probably took me 30 the old legs probably took me 30 what do you think is a fair price to be fully transparent about the price if I were to see a company producing this I would expect the price to be between 500, five to seven hundred dollars probably, because I've seen other backpacks made of like all stead leather or all Horween leather. It's usually around seven hundred dollars. This stuff from Acadia, it's a little bit more affordable because they use all Tasman. This is all Tasman hides, which doesn't have the same reputation as Horween, but I can tell you like functionally, dur durability wise and quality wise, I'd put it up there with Horween stuff. A price estimate, interest level, is a green and brown bag something that that you think people would be after or should i just stick to like very basic like colors browns tans things like that N not something so quite so wild as the emerald green and oleg was kind enough soon as he got his bag he just got it today he was kind enough to send me pictures of him rocking it and using it and i just thought that that is the coolest thing ever. Thank you, Oleg. These are awesome pictures and the bag looks great on you. As a bonus, I decided to throw in a double wrap bracelet for him. I've started trying my hand at like making other things. I figure as a good bonus for these bags, for every purchase, I'll throw in a free double wrap bracelet or, you know, something to that effect made of the same leather that the bag is made in I think that would be a good little good little bonus uh for people that that buy my bags as well as you know I'd like to do handwritten notes as well and things like that really give it a personal touch and you know throw in little surprises that I think enhance your appreciation of the bag I've made myself a couple bracelets they make you appreciate the leather more and it also gives you a good indication of what the leather is going to look like after it ages by the way you have something that matches the bag too so you can't beat that so <laughs> so thank you oleg for the pictures they look awesome enjoy it my friend you know, i think that this this bag really looks good on you it fits you perfectly and i really think that uh it's gonna look amazing after some use and abuse so anyways i'm done rambling for now thanks a lot for watching guys please give me your thoughts in the comments below and anyways i will see y'all in my next video